Hi everyone, this is just a quick demo of how to take a um, raster image of your analysis information or perhaps your master plan design and actually map it onto the site surface or the site area in our 3D model. Uh, I did a demo of this for Rhino, how to set that up. And uh, I'm going to show you the same method here with, uh, with SketchUp. SketchUp's tools give you a, actually a little easier way to manipulate the application of an image onto the surface. And uh, like when I discussed the Rhino method, that all starts in Photoshop. So let's go over to Photoshop and take a look at this. So what I started with here, uh, just as an example, whether this is your sketch, this is site analysis information about tree locations on the site. Um, if you have more area than actually the boundaries of the site, you really want to crop that down. Now in Rhino, it's kind of important that you keep it oriented the same way as the geometry of the site in your model. In SketchUp, it doesn't really matter. The, the method that it uses to map it on the site is very flexible. So it really, you could rotate this any angle you want, doesn't make any difference, but you do want to crop it down. So I'm going to use the standard crop tool and then just pull this over right so it touches the outside corners just like prepping it for Rhino. Uh, again, would, whatever orientation it is for SketchUp doesn't really matter, but you do want it cropped down tight because we're going to use uh, a floating pin method to put this on the site. So we'll just click OK. And then what I did with this is um, I took this, I made a copy of it, and I just added a site plan in here. So I found an image online, and I just duplicated it, made it kind of uh, symmetrical, and lined that up with the site boundaries, since I know they're accurate. Now, once I did this, I exported that as a PNG file and placed that in the, uh, in the folder so I can bring that into SketchUp. So the first thing we need to do is be able to line this up. Now, since this is a 3D model, and it already has the terrain on it. If I show the hidden geometry, you can see that's already a mesh surface. I can't manipulate that directly on the mesh surface. So what I need to do is create a flat surface, put the texture on it, line it up, and then turn it into a projected texture and simply project it onto the site. Now, if you had done this original modeling, you might have kept the 2D version of this before it was draped onto the SketchUp terrain model. This model doesn't have it in there, so it's an easy way to fix that. I'm just going into plan view, I'm going to change to parallel projection, and just draw a rectangle kind of around the site. And since my terrain model is elevated and my surface that I just drew is not, they're not going to connect or interact. So what I'm going to do is take this and just move it up just so it makes it easier to align later on. I can switch back to my perspective mode now. And then I'm simply going to use the drape tool. So I'm going to double click on this, use the drape tool. And it's usually the reverse of how we do this. Usually we take 2D geometry and drape it down onto a landform, but the drape tool works either way. And then I can simply trim away the pieces that I don't need. So now I have a 2D version of that same exact area. And that's what I want to use to bring the, the image in. So I'm going to go to File and Import. Make sure you've selected the proper file format, so all supported image types. And there's my site plan that I cropped down. And I'm just going to snap anywhere. It doesn't really, again, doesn't matter at first. Just place it on there and get it on the site. OK, now, obviously, it's not in the right position. So instead of trying to just, I'm going to right click, choose texture and position. Now, normally when this comes up, you probably would see these colored, multicolored pins, and they are fixed pins that allow you to rotate and zoom. Now, you could just simply scale it back and forth and rotate it until it lines up, but that's going to take a while. And since this is basically the right orientation, there's a lot easier way to do it, and that is to use the floating pins. That turns all the pins white and allows you simply to take them, click, let go, and drag it to a corner. Now I'm using kind of the center of that line, since it, that corner, since it's kind of thick. Click, let go, and drag. So this next one, um, maybe click and drag. We'll put that one over here. And trying to keep them centered within the line in every instance. And I'll just take this one and put it on this corner. So even though there's more than four corners, that gives us a good orientation. And now simply click and hold the left button down. You drag that and snap it right to the geometry. Snap that to there. Snap that to there. 
click and drag, and snap that to there. And now you can see we've got that locked in. Fits perfectly. Right click and choose Done. And we've got our texture applied to the 2D version of the site boundary. Now, of course, I want to put that on my 3D model version. So before I can do that, if I simply use the paint bucket, pick this up, and put it on there, doesn't look very good, right? Because it's trying to map that onto all the different facets of that surface. So what I want to do is right click, choose texture and projected. Now that it's a projected texture, I can go back to my paint bucket, hold the alt key down, pick it up, click, and it puts it right down on the site perfectly. So I've got that model right over the train and I can see how everything fits in there. And if I go into my V-Ray rendering, you can see that that's going to render right up. Now in Rhino, as I mentioned, if you actually use a native Rhino material, it won't show up in V-Ray. But since V-Ray in SketchUp works with SketchUp's native materials, you don't actually have to create a V-Ray material to do this. And if it's a little overexposed, you can adjust the, uh, uh, the camera exposure, but that actually looks pretty good on there. Now it's not super high resolution, so you can see that um, in the, in the rendering, once you zoom in, you're going to lose a little resolution. But if I go down here on the site, and you know, if I added some buildings and things like that in there, I can do a, another rendering from that angle. And you know, it looks pretty good. Without having to add all the geometry in, I can add the buildings. Still looks slightly overexposed, but uh, we can adjust that and make that work. So that's the process in SketchUp. It's really pretty simple and straightforward. Gives you a really quick and accurate way to, to map this on here perfectly just by snapping the corners of the image to the corners of geometry. You also may have noticed it was this was casting a shadow. So once you're done, you might want to put this on a separate layer or hide it so that uh, as you're rendering, you're not getting a shadow cast uh, from the, the shape above it. And that's how you do it.